the end of the day. But uh, anyway, we've always been there in June. We've never been there in the, in the winter months. Hey, Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. With all the stuff that went on in 2020 for the COVID virus, I have to tell you, things were tough for field day this year. Things were looking gloomy. Everybody was saying that field day isn't going to happen. Well, here in Ventura County, at least, a bunch of guys got together and figured out how to make it happen. This is an interview of those guys. They put together several different uh, initiatives and got the entire county to work together to pull off a field day together, but separate. Hi, everybody. My name's Stu, AG6AG, and I'm fortunate enough today to be joined by Zach, N6PK, Brad, W6VO, Keith, uh, W6KME, and Andy, K6AGL, uh, the movers and shakers for our countywide event this field day. Um, we are here in Ventura County, and uh, uh, we just want to talk a little bit about some of the projects, what went right, what went wrong, and what was fun, and what was, oh my God, why did we ever decide to do that? Um, what I'd like you to do, if everybody just go around and talk, uh, give me, um, you know, uh, half a paragraph on what your role actually was. Let's start with Zach. Hi, I'm uh, Zach and 6 pk uh, what we did is we, we had the various uh, uh, VHF repeaters in the area, Ventura County, hooked together so that we can talk all during the 24 hours uh, field day. Actually, it was about 25 hours, a little before, a little bit afterwards. So if anyone had any problems, if anyone wanted a little help on anything, either before, during, or after, they can just get on uh, Bozo or any of the link repeaters and ask questions. I lined up people who were network uh, operators in order to make sure that we didn't have pileups. And I also set up a whole bunch of Elmers to help out with any questions. And that's what we did during field day. All right, great. Brad, what uh, was your role? Well, my role was uh, trying to uh, create a Zoom culture for the, uh, the amateurs doing field day. And uh, what we did is we set up Zoom alongside of our radios. We uh, got on uh, before the uh, field day actually took place. And uh, we got to chat and uh, ask questions or brag about our setups. And then we went hard, uh, hard right back to work. And um, field day started and uh, we broke it around uh, noontime, I think it was. And we uh, met again for a, a little chat to see how everybody was doing. And at the same time, we had uh, the Zoom actually going for 26 hours. So these were just the uh, programs that uh, we had uh, set up in advance. And then we had one at uh, the end of the day. And everybody could uh, talk about what they've been doing. So while you were actually uh, doing field day, you got to watch everybody. Everybody left their cameras on. And thankfully, they uh, muted their microphones. And so if you wanted to talk to somebody, you could just uh, pick them off and uh, or uh, send them a chat. So it all worked out great. All right. All right. So uh, Andy, K6 uh, AGL, the PR stuff. How did that all go? Well, I think it went really well. I mean, my role was really to uh, Kind of get the word out about the various things that we were doing over the over the field day and um, i used my role as the webmaster or whatever at uh, at seavark and uh, made sure that i kept kind of a complete uh posting and i and, and i kept working on it and massaging it and adding new things as we as we went along so that it could be used as a resource so that uh, anybody wanting to describe the the events that were happening over the field day weekend could go right to there and get the, you know, Zoom credentials or find out what frequency we were holding the uh, the nets on and that sort of thing, to be able to have all that resource in in one place. And 
you know, was all, um, and, I, and I think what was unique about it is that uh, for the first time that I can remember, we communicated between clubs. So the information that I was posting on the Caneo Valley Amateur Radio Club site was shared with some of the other clubs in Ventura County. Uh, some of them linked to it, some of them put it in their newsletters, and some actually took the, the same article and posted it up on the website. And, you know, that kind of level of cooperation and communication, we just have never had before. But I thought, you know, everything that we did kind of addressed the, you know, the two issues that we were trying to uh, deal with, uh, with the uh, with the changes with field day. And, uh, and one was the loss of, of camaraderie. And so obviously all these, um, all these uh, efforts were aimed at, at, at kind of creating camaraderie inside the club and between, you know, members of the different clubs. I got to know a lot of different people, you know, through the efforts uh, that we we had over field day. And I knew those, I, I got to know people I hadn't really met before. And then and the other thing was to try to find activities that the, you know, the technician operators, uh, um, who we would normally be introducing to HF at field day sites, you know, what, what sort of activities could we create that would keep them involved? And so to yep. build interest in that, all we had to kind of work and build communication for that. Well, I've got to tell you, that's a, that, that, those were two excellent segues, actually. Andy, and I want to thank you for that. Um, that's one what seg- I do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, one of the segues was, uh, you know, the group effort and all the clubs getting together. And that was kind of my job. I was the one that was the uh, uh, liaison that was working with all the clubs, trying to pull this all together. I also did a few videos and uh, did some uh, software stuff, but I'll go into that later. The other segue, which was excellent, was for the VHF initiative and the Terry Graves Memorial. And uh, Keith, W6KME. Give us a description of that if you could. Sure. I have to give a little bit of background that due to COVID, uh, all of us here had been working on the daily nets on VHF that had been astonishingly successful with the you know thousands of logins over a couple of months and uh, had really found a lot of ham radio culture that wasn't necessarily tied to any of the clubs specifically, just countywide, an awful lot of people that were ham radio operators. At the same time this was going on, everyone was trying to figure out and wringing their hands what to do about field day because what we usually did wasn't going to happen, obviously. And noticed that a lot of the people on these nets weren't necessarily people that had ever really gotten very involved in field day. They'd be the people that come visit the tent and hang out at the food table and have a good time, and that would be the end of their radio commitment for the day. We were trying to find a way to get a lot of technicians involved, and it was turning around in my head that what we needed to do maybe wasn't just support technicians, but to support hams. And the Terry Graves contest came in my own mind as a way of uh, having a uh, field day radio activity that wasn't directed at any one class of license or level of radio ownership or commitment to the hobby. Everybody would be able to take part on it pretty fairly and pretty equally. And that turned out to, uh, I don't know, it seemed like it, it filled a need that we didn't necessarily know needed filling. But all right. but it was there all right, and it turned out surprisingly uh, popular. So the biggest fear that everybody seemed to have uh, was that uh, field day wasn't going to happen. And I've got uh, I've got a video clip from one of the interviews that I did. I just want to share with everybody. I would say it was much more hectic than I had ever seen the, the <laughs> waves. And I don't think I was quite ready for just how many people were out there and just really? how many how big the pileups were. Like, I knew that it could happen, but I didn't think it would be constant pileups all day. Oh, yeah. 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 We were, you know, we were in our backyard already, and then like 11 a.m. hits. It's just like chaos. And we were just like, what do I do? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think we honestly just sat there for like 15 minutes, just like going, like, oh my goodness. And then finally, like, okay, I think I can talk now. I think there's a, a break for me. <laughs> Well, you certainly caught on fast. Um, that was um, uh, a, from an interview that I'm going to be posting later. But I want you guys all to see that because 
when I was talking to those people and they were talking about that, you know, uh, I, I was like validated at that point. I thought that was amazing, right? Um, so, hey, let's do this. Let's start off with Zach and the, uh, uh, the Bozo event here. Give me just a second to prep this. And then we also had some questions on antennas and we did check in. I know for a large portion of the time, Zach was on the Bozo repeater, I think it was, for yes. any questions. We definitely called in there like we, we'd made a contact with someone on 70 centimeters that we had previously contacted on two meters and we we're like wait does that count we weren't sure absolutely so we, yep, yeah. so we popped over there real quick just to make sure we're like wait does this count and they're like you're good <laughs> so having that kind of live help i think was good to have all right so if that doesn't validate what you did zach um tell me tell me about well you know what i'm gonna do do the three that i have here because i want to do one for brad and then i'm going to just kind of open up the floor here uh, it was great it was a lot of fun doing zoom virtually you know you could go uh on any on zoom and see your fellow um ham radio uh operators you know hear them on the radio or on zoom so it was great it was a lot of fun and all right and the last one i have last but not least has to do with uh, uh the terry graves initiative you know, um, you did participate in uh, uh, the Terry, Terry Graves Memorial, which is absolutely yeah. awesome, um, uh, in the HT class. And uh, you took second place. I saw that. Yeah, that yes. was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Lindsay, that was a nice little bonus. Lindsay, yeah, she, she, I guess, was an animal on this one. She <laughs> rocked it. I, I, I was, I, I just, when I was reading the results and who, who uh, placed where I, just had a big smile on my face, as pleased as punch. I thought, this is what it's all about. I think uh, that initiative really helped to uh, bring, just bring to bear within our local camp community, hey, get out your little HE, whatever it is you have. I even saw that there was a boat anchor class. Yes, that was pretty darn yes. cool. <laughs> Absolutely. So with that, Zach, what was it, what were some of the crazy things that were going on during uh, during the net? Well, a lot of interesting things were happening with people that were on the net and also on the Zoom at the same time, when they didn't know where to talk or where whether to uh, where to look. You know, people that were operating and then they uh, talked on there and then they looked over to the Zoom and started talking on the Zoom and and it was very interesting. Another uh, thing that happened was some of the Elmers answered on Zoom. And we're talking to people on Zoom, but yet the people were on Bozo. So we had to port them over and, and get them from one, one to the other. So because a lot of people were monitoring both at the same time, and they didn't know where the other person was. That's funny. That's funny. So uh, that, that was, uh, there were two times that that happened. <laughs> that, you know, I was trying to tell people, and now let's go over to Bozo and see what they say. You know, well, and uh, it worked out. It worked good out. Good deal. Brad, I mean, you know, Bozo, and for the for people that don't know what Bozo is, we've used the term a bit. Uh, Bozo is the Rasno repeater out here in uh, Newberry Park, California, uh, on the east end of Ventura County. And it is the primary repeater for us out here for emergency uh, uh, preparedness, as well as just uh, conversations. We run a lot of nets on it. It's a real workhorse. And uh, I won't go into the story of why it's called Bozo, but it's as, uh, it's as epic a story as the clown was. I'll leave it at that. Um, anyway, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because you mentioned the confusion in Zoom. I had Zoom on the entire time, uh, even when I was sleeping. I'm sure they might have heard me from the other room. But, uh, yes, uh, we did. <laughs> but Brad, you know, hey, tell me. Tell me all about Zoom and the marvelous fun time that must have been. 26 hours, you know, in front of a camera. Yeah. Well, I just want to let you know right off the get-go here that I, I was not up for 26 hours. Uh, I might color my hair, but I still deemed my rest. Um, I guess the success part 
there was that we, um, I assigned a bunch of co-hosts uh, to the Zoom, so uh, it would go on for the night and not uh, be a problem. I, I guess uh, uh, it did go down for a short while in the middle of the night, but it was brought right back up. Um, you know, I think the other success part of the uh, Zoom, uh, we'll call it the initiative, was that, you know, we're used to all being in a tent and uh, we can look out of the corner of our eye and, and I can see uh, Andy down there on his radio and he can see me and, and everybody can kind of uh, see one another and if they want to take a break, they can kind of get up, walk over to somebody and, uh, you know, start up a little conversation and how are you doing and what's the bands, what are the bands doing for you? I think the Zoom uh, uh, gave uh, people a chance to look out of the corner of their eye, look up on their computer screen and see everybody hard at work. So it was a little bit like if we were all in the tent together. So I think that was uh, one of the nice, uh, nice uh, attributes of it. Very cool. Very cool. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I, I was in there, although I will admit, you know, I had a lot of screens open on the computer. I had logging software and I had a waterfall and I had this and I had that. I had this little bitty square, little bitty weight down, weight down in the bottom corner, all muted down. And every time somebody would make a noise, it would change to that person. It was great. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was a little apprehensive about the Zoom meeting when it was first kind of proposed. And, you know, wow, did that ever turn out to, in my opinion, be a big success. And, you know, from the people I've talked to, I've just given you highlights from one of them. But uh, there was a lot of good word on all of these. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I got to tell you, uh, 26 hours, man. I'm impressed. Yeah, you weren't there the whole time. You were there doggone near the whole time. I think every time that I flipped that thing up, you were there. Hey, you might have been like this, <laughs> but you were there the whole time. You were. Um, Keith, so for those of you that don't know out there, Keith kind of inherited the entire uh, VHF initiative from uh, a another ham that was working on it and had to step back early in the game uh, for personal reasons. Um, and Keith was good enough to step up and boy, did he ever step up. Um, he originally was doing uh, loaner antennas for all the VHF operators, all the newbies. He, he made all these J poles, but ah, let me let you talk about it, Keith. Well, double question there, I guess, if we're talking about the contest and the equipment for the uh, VHF initiative. Yeah, all of it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really draw too much of a line between the contest and the VHF initiative. Instead, uh, the contest, you know, kind of grew in my mind slowly. I was given a lot of good reasons why we really couldn't do something like that, and I uh, modified it to accommodate some, and I ignored some of them, and as people learned about it, they uh, became more and more interested, and that sort of came to envelop the efforts to get VHF active, which became more than just trying to offer a concession to the technicians who wouldn't get to go to the tent and play with the big radios. Uh, it turned into something where they got to be equal players with everybody else. And looking at the score sheets that were turned in for the contest, it's a very even mix of new hams with one handheld people have been hams for some years and never progressed past a technician just doing vhf and so you know several pretty hardcore contester types that uh, by sunday were realizing that's where all the action was was on vhf and so you know it really met the main goal which was to be something that was specifically for all the hams of the county not favoring any one group out of those. And well, that was, I think, what I'm hoping we're in the future, when we have regular field days again, provided that we do, we're going to be able to learn from that and do things to be able to include even more of the community than is normally involved in field days and maybe involve more uh, radio activity than is traditionally done as well. So there's you know, some possibilities some the, for us. Some of the bigger points in that, and you know, the the concept of having uh, 
uh, operators in on base stations that were actually monitoring the, um, uh, the frequencies and mm -hmm. uh, you know knowing you know, allowing that person to know that when they call CQ, there's probably, if there's somebody that can hear them, they're going to answer. They're going to yeah. get an answer. There's going to be people out there on that frequency that are going to answer them. And it's not as easy to turn around to a bunch of, you know, new hams or, uh, you know, VHF only hams and say, yeah, you know, just talk into your HT and someone will come back to you. And by the way, you're on Simplex. Oh, and by the way, you're in a uh, valley oh and by the way it's only gonna go you know uh, maybe a mile maybe a mile and a half at best but so you might talk to somebody we actually placed the environment in there that allowed them to get their sea legs and i think for me that was that was a big thing the contest absolutely that got them to keep out there and to keep plugging away at it but uh, I think that first part of the initiative also, we really can't discount that. I mean, uh, what, do you, what do you think, Andy? I think um, it was phenomenal. Um, I, I, I think it was uh, really important that we made that promise that, you know, mm -hmm. that at least you could turn on your radio and in the first 10 minutes of an hour, you know, someone would answer your call. Because anybody who had any experience with, with prior field days kind of knew that if you were on two meters, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of pointless. Uh, you know, it would be very difficult to raise somebody in a typical field day on two meters unless they were lost and trying to find the field day site or, 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 or something of, of that sort. But uh, to actually make some meaningful contact. So I think doing that promise really created um, um, you know, that, that guarantee really gave people confidence to go on and, and, and make those contacts. And then I noticed, because I would continue to monitor the, the VHF frequencies, you know, beyond the 10 minutes and throughout the hour, and I would hear conversations, you know, continuing, QSOs continuing right through the whole, the whole hour. So people, and, as, and especially as field day continued, that confidence gained and they realized that they could continue to make a good number of contacts outside of that 10 minute period. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny too. Now I'm going to play one more video and this, uh, the, the question, if I remember the question, I, I kind of chopped these up real quick before this, uh, for, before this uh, deal. But if I remember the question, it had to do with what do you, how do you think, you know, next field day is going to be, or what is your opinion or, or what was different? And this is, uh, this is Lindsay and Tyler. Lindsay took first place in the uh, event, the uh, Terry Graves event. So. For me, field day has always been like HF, the big long distance contacts. So I was like, oh, like people aren't going to be on, you know, our bands. We're going to maybe talk to a couple people. We don't get to see all the equipment. So I was initially a little bummed, but it was super fun. So I think knowing how fun it is at home, you know, next day when field day is in person, I would definitely, you know, during the day, go see, you know, play with all the fancy toys, talk to the people, but then go home, right, and then have your own mini competition. Mm -hmm. And I think if pe more people are also kind of following that model, right, I think that um, would encourage maybe more participation at home, right? Because this kind of let you know, like, yep, you can have fun at field day at home. Like, you don't have to have the fancy Boy, set up. Those are words to live by, huh? I mean, that uh, that kind of sums it up. Her dad and her grandfather um, are avid amateur radio operators. As a matter of fact, her father is the one that checks in from Whittier uh, in the board oh. meeting. And, uh, you know, she's been exposed to amateur radio her whole life. Uh, and uh, she also is active over with uh, the Amgen group as well. So anyway, anything else anybody wants to touch on? Well, guys, thank you so much. And, you know, to everybody, uh, job well done. You know, uh, you guys really put the legwork in. I made a few videos. I'll throw that out there. A uh, couple of people watching. And, um, you know, we had, uh, we had a really great relationship building kind of event where 
uh, all the clubs managed to open up the communications and everybody that could and was able to get their groups to participate, participated. And, uh, you know, it was a good thing. We did something good. We should pat ourselves on the back. Careful not to throw our shoulders out. Here, here. <laughs> All right, guys. All right, thanks. And everybody, thanks for joining us. And we'll catch you another time. Take care. Hey, everybody. Well, there's a lot more to those interviews, but I wanted to save it for later because most of it really what involved local future things. Uh, however, we'll be getting that info up as soon as we can. With that, I want to remind everybody to click the subscribe button. If you subscribe, you'll get notifications when we do new videos. With that, I want to bid everybody a 73 from AG6AG, and I hope to hear you out on the air.